Hello fellow Rosarians, thank you for joining me today. I wanted to do a quick video on planting bare root roses. I'm gardening in zone 7D in Maryland and I have clay soil. And I'll tell you why that's important in a second. Uh, but when your roses arrive and you unbox them, make sure you read that literature really quick from the vendor that says how long to soak, do they recommend fertilizers and so forth. But you're gonna pop them in water and I'm sure that that guidance says something about soaking them between four and 48 hours. I soak for 24. I drop them in the water with nothing else in it, make sure that the roots are submerged in the water, and then I go and get lost and find something else to do for a day. During that time, you can certainly start digging your holes. So let's talk about digging the holes. So as I mentioned to you, I'm gardening in clay soil. And what that means is that the soil holds on to a lot of water. And when you are planting anything, you wanna make sure that you're using a lot of that native soil, because if you can picture that you're digging hole and if you're adding compost and things that are, have a loose medium and then as soon as it rains it gets through that loose medium very quickly and then it hits a wall as soon as it hits that clay and so it's going to kind of pool into a, a lake of water and it's really going to be difficult for your plants to survive in conditions like that and so I have found that it's best just to dig my hole nearly the exact size that I need for those roots and then backfill with my native soil and if I need a little bit more of medium after I've chopped up that clay to kind of get it in there I, I bring in a little bit of topsoil but I make sure that the majority of that backfill is going to be clay um, if you are gardening in something different like uh, sand you're going to want to get completely different guidance about how you're going to backfill make sure that you reach out to your American Rose Society or your master gardeners in your area and they'll give you some guidance now that we've dug our hole what am I putting in the hole I'm putting gypsum in because again gypsum is for clay soil gypsum is not for sandy soil but I just take a handful of gypsum it helps soften it up a little bit over time it's very gentle and it does not hurt the plant and then I'm also putting in a handful of biotech and biotone is a starter, a root stimulator. And although the roses are asleep, as soon as they wake up, that biotone is there for them to use. But make sure that as you're reading the literature from your vendor, that if it says anything like only use liquid fertilizer for the first year, that you call them and ask if you can use biotone. Although it is gentle, some vendors don't want you to use biotone but I've always used it. Now we've thrown in our gypsum and our rose tone. It's time to go ahead and put that rose in the ground. So let's pretend these are my green canes and these are my roots. This is your soil level. If you are in um, you know, clay soil or zone seven or warmer, you can have your, your green canes out of the ground and the ground level meets just where the roots start. But let's say you're um, gardening in a cooler environment from mine, and under you're actually going to take those canes and now this is your soil level and why do we do that so that we can give that rose additional insulation through the winter so real quick why are we not burying deep in clay soil uh, we've got a high water table here and I have found that if I take those canes and I plant them here at this level my roses don't thrive as well so I find for me um, that it's easier just to keep it at that ground level. All right, so then after we get it in the ground, we're going to backfill it, and then we're going to wait a few weeks to start our fertilizer. All right, let's go ahead and get started really quick. So we're out here at the Star Garden, and I've shared with you um, how beautiful it's just gonna be. I've planted scentables, so it's going to be Bliss, of course, my favorite. Princess Charlene de Monaco, Sweet Mademoiselle, Bolero, Top Cream, Summer Romance, Orchid Romance. It's going to be amazing. And with the Scentables line, highly petaled, highly scented, and I think with the wind coming off the water, it's really going to be so beautiful while I sit here. I'm just taking in all of those wonderful scents. You can see when we're looking at this root size here, I would say that's only 14 inches or so. So with this hole, I'm digging 14 inches by about um, 12 inches, not cutting any roots, not cutting any of the canes. First thing I'm going to do is put in my uh, biotone. And then I'm going to put in a handful of gypsum. And then I'm going to pop my rose in. Now remember we talked about ground level. 
And then all I'm going to do is simply backfill. I'm not putting any other amendments or anything in my soil. I mean, you can look at this and see clay soil. You can tell because when you squeeze it together, it makes a ball. So I'm popping it back. My husband used the auger. I've shared a video with you on that, on uh, making this hole, and it allows us to get through uh, 30 roses in no time. So now that I've backfilled, see I'm bringing it up. I'm not really going to tamp it down because uh, we're, it's not necessary. We're going to get uh, rain, and it's going to help it. Um, any top dressing that you'd like to do to improve the soil with compost, you just need to top dress with compost and that will gently feed and loosen up your clay. And then I'm going to bring back all of my mulch. I bring my mulch all the way to the rows so that it helps me to suppress weeds and keep the rows watered. So there you go. So it's really easy to plant the bare root roses. If you have really dry soil, you can water them, but technically they're still asleep. Once you see them waking up, you're gonna see they're gonna start pushing leaves. So when am I fertilizing? A good date for you to shoot for is your, uh, your frost date. So go ahead and Google your zip code, 22222, and then say frost date, and it'll pull up and let you know when your date is, and that really is the date that you're gonna start fertilizing. So go ahead and put that on your calendar, and we'll talk about that in another video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.